Hello, I am Barry Sullivan, Director of Program Development for the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department Heads Association. It's my pleasure to introduce the Spotlight presentation from National Instruments, be presented by Mark Walters, Academic Marketing Manager at National Instruments, and he'll be speaking on Answering the Grand Engineering Challenges, Inspire Students in Engineering. Thank you. So you might be familiar with this slide. This outlines the 14 top engineering grand challenges set forth by the National Academy of Engineering. Now this represents a beacon or a call for scientists and engineers to be able to solve these types of challenges in the 21st century to be able to improve society. And as you take a look at a couple of these complex challenges, you have to think that there has to be a better way to solve these problems. Now, before he was CEO of National Instruments, Dr. James Truchard worked at the University of Texas Applied Research Labs. And he was an acoustics engineer. Now, Dr. Truchard found that he had a problem. He was spending more time focusing on the tools than he was actually solving his problems. He was working with a number of disjointed technologies and disjointed tools to be able to combine digitizers, oscilloscopes, and having to build the software from the ground up. He searched for a better way. So he sought out the different elements that he needed in order to combine and create a system. Now those elements include measurement and control, math and analysis, a graphical user interface, different ways and approaches with math mathematical models of computation to be able to solve your problem, and making sure that he was able to incorporate the latest technologies, sometimes the disruptive technologies, that allowed him to get to the results faster. And he created a company that used the hardware to be defined by the software to incorporate all of these key elements into one standardized platform, empowering the user to be able to design, prototype, and deploy applications that required measurement and control. So at National Instruments, we believe that we can help solve these great challenges that are affecting our society today. And we've been trying to solve these complex problems since the day we were first founded. We believe it's through science and engineering that we're going to be able to create solutions for these problems. And National Instruments is committed to equipping scientists and engineers with tools that accelerate the productivity, the innovation, and the, the discovery of these problems allowing scientists and engineers to focus on the problem at hand and not the tool. One of the areas that we believe that these complex challenges are going to be solved is with the next generation of innovators, the people who are going to be pursuing engineering. So we are very committed to academia, to the universities and colleges that you belong to. Specifically, these three main areas, to attract new students into engineering, to engage and retain these students, and then to equip and prepare your students and researchers to be able to solve their problems. Now, there's a number of different types of programs, initiatives, and collaborations we have in the K-12 space. Programs like Project Lead the Way, where they incorporate a digital electronics course in high schools to encourage students to pursue electrical engineering. And other programs like the Southern Regional Education Board that provides a hands-on STEM experience to these high schools and their students. One of the most popular programs that we are proud to sponsor is called FIRST. Has anybody participated or seen a first competition? 
It's hard to explain the excitement that you would see in a room when these students are building up these robots and competing with one another. At the age starting at nine, nine years old, where they're actually programming an embedded robot to do a specific challenge, all the way up until high schools, where these students are tasked with the problem to be able to build up a 120-pound robot that requires parallel programming, sensors and actuation, wireless and network systems, and a very limited amount of time. It's amazing the output from this program in just six weeks and the amount of excitement that you see in these kids' eyes as they're going through this type of competition. It's through programs like this that we believe that we are inspiring and really exciting students to pursue engineering and science. But once we have those students hooked, once we have them in, in engineering, we can't just stop there. We need to continue to engage these students and excite them. Now, in the New York Times, they called this thing called the Math and Science Death March in Engineering, where the first two years, in some college programs, we provide a blizzard of math courses and theory-based courses in lecture halls of over 100 students. When we do this, we risk the chance of keeping a student from becoming the next innovator who's going to be able to solve our clean water crisis or be able to provide affordable energy to everyone if they leave engineering. We have to do something better. We have to be able to give that student the theory and allow them to see how that's, what the result's going to be. We need to give them the equation and allow them to apply it and do engineering so they can get a deeper understanding of this material, be able to apply it, and really see how relevant it applies to after they graduate. We can't wait until senior design before they're able to apply these equations. We have to do it when they learn it. So we have developed a number of educational platforms that have been designed and developed for engineering classrooms and laboratories that combine industry standard hardware with software and complement this with courseware and textbooks that allow you to focus on the concepts and allow students to understand the material. Now all of these different platforms can span throughout the range of the engineering curriculum for circuits and electronics, for measurements and instrumentation, RF communications and controls and robotics. A couple of these platforms, one is NIELVIS, which is our lab solution that allows you to go into measurement, circuit electronics courses, and basic instrumentation courses, integrating a suite of 12 PC-based instruments into a compact form factor. The next platform is called MIDAC, which you might be familiar with. And this provides a one-on-one -on -one experience or a more personalized experience, allowing that student to take that lab anywhere a laptop can run, giving them the opportunity to really understand this homework problem, whether that's at a coffee shop at 4 o'clock in the morning or inside their dorm room. In controls and uh, mechatronics, we have partnerships with leading uh, organizations like Kwanzer to be able to combine platforms like Compact Rio with plants that allow students to really understand the control theory. And finally, we have communication design platforms like the Universal Software Defined Radio that allows a person or a student to be able to take very abstract mathematical concepts and communications and be able to apply those to really understand modulation and demodulation by creating things like their own FM radio. So one example is at Rutgers, where a professor incorporated a digital communications system lab inside of his own software-defined radio lab. And this is what we seek, is when students actually get excited about the engineering. And this was a quote that we got from one of the students who attended his class, where they were excited because they got that deep understanding 
of how those communication systems actually work. The last step is to equip and prepare these students to solve their problems, whether that's a student, a graduate student, or even a researcher. We need to be able to supply them with industry standard hardware that allows them not only to solve their problem, but also prepare them for industry. So graphical system design is this platform-based approach for measurement and control that standardizes on these key platforms, allowing the user to be able to incorporate disruptive technologies and be able to take and solve applications that require measurement and control. In applications like test and monitoring, embedded applications or control applications, and even cyber physical systems. The key aspect with this platform-based approach is we want you to focus on your problem and not the tools. Now there's a number of different features why industry has selected National Instruments as the leader for taking in data into the computer. One of those reasons is the investment that we make to make your job a little bit easier. On the left-hand side, I have a listing of what it takes in order to do a DMA of an analog input on an FPGA. That's literally tens of thousands of VHDL code. Our engineers at National Instruments have done research and development to simplify that process for you. Investing in over years of man hours so that you can do that with just two blocks on a block diagram. Allowing you to incorporate a heterogeneous system using software that allows you to focus in on the problem itself. And this was one of the reasons why Duke Energy selected Compact Rio and LabVIEW to standardize for their next generation of equipment. Now Duke Energy is one of the US leaders and providers of power generation. They needed to make updates to their infrastructure and their network, and they chose a graphical system design platform to incorporate these latest technologies and be able to scale their systems up until 25,000 sensors in a network and distributed system. And it's these types of challenges, ranging from providing the software for the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 platform allowing an eight-year-old to become an embedded programmer, all the way up into controlling the launch of the Dragon space capsule for SpaceX using LabVIEW. And it's this range of being able to provide applications and tools that we believe we can solve the world's greatest challenges. Now, we, National Instruments wants to work and partner with your organizations, with your schools, and with your students because we believe that it's one of your students who's gonna help us solve these engineering grand challenges in the 21st century. We believe that it's your student that's gonna be able to provide energy from fusion. It's your student that's gonna be able to connect the smart grid. And we wanna work with you to be able to attract, engage and retain, and equip your students to be able to solve society's greatest problems. So for the course of the next two days, I encourage you to come speak with us to find out how we can work closely with your organization, with your students, and with yourself. We're gonna be in booth number 202, where we're gonna be giving away a number of solutions that you can incorporate, not only to attract, but also retain your students. And we're gonna have a breakout session to talk a little bit more about our electrical power and energy research tools that allow you to really focus in on this area a new and emerging area. So I want to thank you for your time and I look forward to the conversations of how we can work closer with you. Thank you.